Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Today in this part, I solder on the third slide finger ring, then I expand the tube for the main tuning slide and attach the main lead pipe to the horn. I also do some filing on the braces on the bell side because we're not gonna use the ambassador braces to attach the bell. Let me show you. So the first thing up is setting a comfortable distance for this finger ring. You can see me checking that here. To hold this finger ring in place, I need some wire to tie around the finger ring and the valve slide. Right now I'm annealing that copper wire to make it easier to work with. When you anneal copper, it makes it softer but unlike steel, when you quench it to cool it down quickly, it doesn't harden. It still remains ductile. Here I'm applying a bit of paste flux to the fingering. I use this copper wire to hold the finger ring in place while I solder. I take special time to make sure everything's aligned because once it's soldered in place, that's the permanent position. For this joint, I only need about a centimeter or two of solder to make sure that it doesn't overflow. Now I'm starting what will turn out to be quite a long filing process, but I need to remove the valve caps first so that I don't accidentally nick them when I'm filing so close. I'm using different shapes of small needle files to make sure that the final profile of this brace is what I want it to be. But a jeweler's saw would have been a better tool here and the final shaping could have been done quicker with these needle files. This process took longer than I expected, so I actually had to go get a stool at this point. I had to shorten these posts quite a bit to make sure that the bell doesn't interfere with the brace system we'll use in the next part. Here you can see the main tuning slide fitting into the lead pipe receiver and you can tell how loosely it fits and we're going to correct that with a slide expander. This will also create a step bore at this point in the horn which will better match the bore of the bell. I make sure to apply some Vaseline to this slide expander to make sure that everything is running smooth while I apply force to this part. This process takes a while because I can only expand the tube by a very small amount every time and I need to check the smoothness of the fit after each time. At this point I'm ready to start soldering on the lead pipe and I'm going to use the tuning slide to make sure that everything is set to the proper distance and indexed properly against the bracing. Here I notice that the brace is interfering with the tuning slide receiver and it's making it not seat properly against those braces. 
This means that I'll have to file this down to remove that interference. Here I'm just making sure that everything is flush and looks like a natural part of this horn. Now I'm dry fitting everything to make sure it's all lined up for when I solder it. I am using the vise here, but I have the valve caps on and I'm using very light pressure in the vise jaws to make sure that none of the threads get crushed. I also want the horn to be level so that when the solder flows it fills these joints properly. These braces do have a larger area and require more solder, but I'm using the Q-tip to make sure that any excess solder is removed. I'm using a small scraper at this point to remove any grunge that I see in the solders. I also noticed that there needs to be a little bit more solder to fill these joints properly, so I go back in and fill them up. Here you can see what it looks like all soldered up. And because everything is running parallel, the tuning slide operates quite smoothly. One more check of the notebook to see if I missed anything. That was part three of this build. We've only got one more to go. Next time we'll attach the bell and get our first play test on this horn. In the meantime, if you want to be notified when I post more videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for stopping by the shop.